Okay, so this video has turned out a lot different than what I had originally planned. This was meant to be an unboxing and review video of the new Festool Sander, the Pro 5 LTD. Things change though, and I think it actually kind of works out for the best. I, I think this actually makes this, at least to me, a more interesting experience than it had been if everything just worked out normal. So what I have right here in this box that just came from UPS today is my Festool Pro 5 LTD sander. You'll notice it's not in a sustainer and there's a good reason for that. So here's my Pro 5. Originally, when this was announced, I think I saw it on Facebook first. And actually, I didn't see it from Festool, I saw it from uh, the Toolnut.com, which is actually where I ordered it from. It really piqued my interest because it was only 99 bucks, which, if you go to Home Depot, that's pretty high price for a sander, but if you compare it to other Festool sanders, 99 bucks is a steal. So I decided to try it. An added benefit of this particular promotion was they were including a certificate to get $50 off your next Festool purchase. And I do want to get one of the RO90s, and if I can get it for 50 bucks off, that's awesome. Fast forward from that a few weeks, uh, I think there were some delays because it, it sold better than they expected, and so Festool retailers had to stop selling it, and there was higher demand than there was product to fulfill that demand. Anyway, I got mine. Uh, several weeks ago and I started on my video I unboxed it it came with all the normal stuff you would expect a festival to come with it came in this sustainer which instead of the traditional beige is obviously black which I actually kind of liked it came with some of the newer uh, I believe it's called the granat sandpaper which is also cool and it came with a new fitting for the hose which my understanding this is just a new style of fitting that festival is putting on the newer sanders that are coming out, but the old fitting that I have on my Festool MIDI, it still fits just fine. So we're good there. Anyway, so as, as part of my unboxing and my review, I decided to do a side-by-side -side comparison between the Pro 5 and my older ETS-125 EQ, which I've had for, I don't know, probably three or four years now. And this has been a great sander. I started by noting some of the differences. First off, that the Pro 5 has a more powerful motor on it. It's rated at 250 watts compared to the 200 watts of the old uh, 125 EQ. And also that it comes with a bumper that you can put on if you were working uh, inside of a piece of casework or something, anywhere where you're gonna have a perpendicular surface so that the edge of the sanding pad doesn't gouge into that, which is kind of cool. Another difference between the two is on the top, there's kind of a, I don't know, like a rubberized grip that's added to the handle, which is kind of comfortable. And then another big difference is the on-off switch. On the Pro 5, it's noticeably larger than it is on the 125 EQ. And for me, at least, on my 125 EQ, and this could just be that I've got a bunch of sawdust stuck in there, but the switch is, it, it, it's kind of hard to push. Like, if you try to do it with one finger, it's hard to do. With the Pro 5, it's just super easy, and it's huge, which I really like. Also, the variable speed control is in a slightly different location. Instead of being mounted directly on the back, it's kind of on the back on the side, which I think I like. I think that might be a little easier in usage to adjust on the fly. So those are really the main differences between the two. Um, they're gonna use the same sandpaper, so no difference there. Then when I started to actually compare these two side by side, I ran into a problem. I would be using the 125 and it would just be smooth as silk as it's always been. And then when I would switch over to the Pro 5, it would start out fine and then it would jerk and it would be okay and then it would jerk. And so it, it made it really hard to control. And it was brand new out of the box. I wasn't sure what the problem was. I didn't know if it was, if that's how the tool was supposed to be, if somehow I was doing something wrong, which I wasn't. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. You turn it on and you go. It's not that hard. I did some research. I looked on the Festival Owners Group forum, and I noticed that a few other people were describing similar problems. So I decided to email Festool about it and just kind of tell them, here's what I'm experiencing. Is that normal, or is there a problem with the unit that I have? That was December 5th. 
Later that, that afternoon, I got a reply from them saying, no, that, that actually isn't how it should be working. You should create a repair order and send that in to us. Let us take a look. So December 6th, I dropped it off at my local UPS store. By December 12th, it was delivered to Festool in their repair shop, whatever they call it, in Indiana. By December 19th, it was on its way back to me. And now today, December 23rd, I've got it back. And they included a card that said what they did and they went through, they did a cleaning, which there wasn't that much on it to begin with because I had only had it for a few hours when I started to have the problems. Did an electrical safety test, that makes sense. And it says that they had to replace the bearing flange, which is this part right here. And I don't know exactly what that flange does, but it's, it's somewhere inside this area and it has to do with the motion of the pad. While it's a bummer that I had a problem with the tool right out of the box, I've got to say that I'm pretty happy with how Festool handled it. There was a, it, it was easy to go on the website and submit this form saying, here's the problem that I'm having. They were quick to reply. They paid for the shipping back to the repair facility and the return shipping to me. And yeah, I was out the tool for a couple weeks, but I still got my old one. So for me, that, that two week time doesn't really matter. If I was a production shop and this was my only sander, well, yeah, that might be a problem. But if you're a production shop, you've probably got more than one sander anyway. Now that I have the tool back, I'm going to try it out again and see if that, that jerky action that I was seeing to see if that is actually still a problem. So what I've got here is just a redwood panel that I've glued up for a sign that I'm going to make. Uh, it's actually already been sanded uh, several months ago when I first started on this project it's actually for I have a separate YouTube channel that I call the grumpy sign maker and it's just for me to make signs about stuff that bugs me that's where this middle finger to cancer sign came from I'll link to it here if you're interested not very many videos on there yet but I'm working on more Okay, so that's actually considerably better than what I was experiencing before. It wasn't jerking around at all. So I'm just going to grab my 125 real quick, swap them out, try it over the same area with the same grit of paper. This is 150 grit granite, and just see how they compare. I did encounter some rough spots, this actually with both sanders in certain areas, and I thought maybe it was just some of the more pronounced grain in a couple spots. But in fiddling with the suction level and the dust extractor, I think maybe I just had that up too high. So I've turned it down and it was much smoother with the 125 after reducing that, which is something you're supposed to do anyway. So I'm going to try the Pro 5 again at the lower section and just see how it does now. Okay, so there you go. Uh, it appears that their repair uh, did the trick. I guess it was just a problem with that bearing flange. So my suggestion, if you are a Pro 5 owner and you have similar issues, hit up Festool. Go to FestoolUSA.com and go to, uh, I had to create an account. Actually, I think I'd already created the account a long time ago, but register your tool. And then there's an option there to set up a, I think it says create repair order or something like that. It was a painless process. Yeah, I was without it for two weeks, but I'm okay with that. And it came back and all indications so far are that it will be a great tool. It's really comfortable. Performance is on par with the 125. Obviously my Pro 5 is a little prettier than my old 125 because this one's brand new and this one's like four or five years old, but I'm really happy with it. I'm also happy with the $50 voucher that I got, so, so there'll be a little bit of a break with the next tool that I get. I'm not sure if the Pro 5 is still available for sale or if this was just a one-time thing. I, I got into it day one and I'm happy with it and I haven't paid attention to anything else about it other than the problem that I had that they fixed. One thing I did find in my comparison is, so the Pro 5 does not come with a dust bag. The 125 does, and the bag from the 125 really doesn't fit the Pro 5 very well, but they do make 
a bag specific for the Pro 5 if you would rather have a dust bag than use a dust extractor. So that's my review, such as it is. I'm, I'm happy with the purchase. Did I really need it? No. I, I probably would have been just fine with this one. And now that I have the Pro 5 back, I think I may either send in my 125 now that I've, I've worked with Festival's repair department. I think I may send this in to get that switch looked at. Um, I don't think this one's under warranty anymore, so I'll probably have to pay for that repair. Maybe I'll try to just fix it myself. I don't know. But I am happy to know that their repair department is responsive and they did their job. So thanks for watching. I wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas or whatever other holiday you choose to observe or not observe. And I hope that 2017 will be a better year than 2016. And as always, subscribe for more things. We'll see you later.